Hello everyone, welcome to another robotic session. So far we talked how we can demonstrate motion of an object in 3D space using rotation matrices and homogeneous transformation matrices. And today we're going to talk about how can we use that to model robots. And uh, the main concept of forward kinematics, a model that would give us the end effector position for robot as a function of its joints angles or translation just a reminder we talked about robots that have a configuration space and a work space configuration space is the space that contains all the joint inputs for this robot that has three degrees of freedom and three joints Configuration space contains values for the two uh, revolute joints and the prismatic joint or the linear joint. Work space is the position of the robot end effector. If we're looking at just the position, it usually has an X component, Y component, Z component. Sometimes we look at the work space including the orientation that it has x y z and it's defined by also three angles let's call them alpha beta gamma orientation of end effector in 3d space and from previous session you have an idea of what these angles mean if we say we're using Euler angles it means this angle shows alpha beta gamma or uh, consecutive rotations about z y z angles so configuration space order is the joint variables and work space shows position or position and orientation of the robot end effector. The goal of robot modeling and forward kinematics is find a function that would give us work space as a function of joint variables or configuration space. Configuration space for any robot kind of shows its degrees of freedom. If you had, for instance, for that robot, two revolute joints, one prismatic joints, our joint variables were three, two rotations and one displacement. We usually should say the degrees of freedom or size of the configuration space, you show it by N. You also said work space. Work space is position or orientation of robot end effector it has m dimensional based on what you want from the robot really if you're just interested in the position of the end effector it has three dimensions x y z position if we're interested in also orientations that adds another three variables for instance Euler angles three rotation angles we call the dimension of the workspace m and briefly, before we talked about how this M and M are related, for instance, if M is bigger than N, our robot is underactuated. And if N is bigger than M, our robot was redundant. We have more degrees of freedom than required to do a task. Now in the forward kinematics, we want to relate these two work spaces, mathematically relate these two. As I briefly said in the previous videos, we do that using transformation matrices, homogeneous transformation. We will attach frames to every joint and trying to find the homogeneous transformation from one joint to another, then the one to the next, then multiplying this matrices we could get the position of the end effector with respect to fixed frame at the base of the robot and the problem of forward kinematics or finding the forward kinematics is simply how can we relate joint variables which we show by vector q to robot end effector position or orientation this function k that would give us position as a function of joint variables is what we're interested in and we need to calculate 
quick reminder that joint variables are not always angles we might have prismatic joints or linear joints so joint variables can be both rotation and have uh, units in radians or degrees and could be also displacement with units in meter I will try to do find calculate the forward kinematics for a simple robot and in the next video I will talk about some guidelines that would make this process easier but to begin with let's consider a very simple case a robot that has three arms let's say the length of the first link is a1 the second link is a2 the third link is a3 and we have three revolute joints the first one rotates by an angle let's call it nu1 the second one but another angle nu2 the third one by nu3 for the forward kinematics we're interested in finding the position of the robot end effector imagine it's carrying a tool a grasper we need to know what is the position of robot end effector as a function of these joint variables nu1 nu2 nu3 let's try to use homogeneous transformation matrix to calculate that this is our schematic of our three link robot and as we said has three revolute joints and three links length of this is a1 length of this is a2 length of this is a3 and it's a planar robot it moves in one plane let's use the concept of homogeneous transformation matrices first we need a reference a stationary global frame I'll pick it right here its Z component is coming outside the plane then I will assign a reference frame for each joint so I put a frame on each joint this is shown with green our reference frame stationary frame or inertial frame is frame 0 shown by red the green frame shows each position of each joint as they rotate now what I would do is to find homogeneous transformation that would bring each frame to its previous one let's start with frame 1 and 0 if you remember from a homogeneous transformation matrix it was defined using this equation a rotation the displacement vector and zeros here and ones here. now let's look at frame one with respect to frame zero green to the red one what is the rotation of frame green with respect to frame uh, zero red frame it has only one elementary rotation around z axis if you remember the elementary rotation matrix from z around z was given by this equation What is the displacement vector from frame 0 to 1? It's 0. So this is the homogeneous transformation from 1 to 0. Now repeat the same for frame 2 to 1. One thing is that I use the shorthand notation C and S to show sine and cosine. Now frame 2 to 1. We have one rotation frame two rotates with respect to frame one but what angle the angle difference would be how much joint two rotates new two and it's only one rotation around z how 
how far are these what's the displacement linear displacement between frame one and two it's only a1 along x direction right by equal to the length of link one to a1 0 0 the next one what is the last one frame 4 to frame 3 frame 4 does not rotate with respect to frame 3 we have don't have any joints anymore so rotation matrix is identity be careful it's not zero zero rotation is meaningless when we have no rotation it's identity how much is the dis displacement difference between frame 3 and 4 a3 alongside x direction only so we have three homogeneous transformations now if i want to show base of frame 4 with respect to frame 1 how do i do that it would be simply this if we multiply by this this would bring anything in the end effector frame frame 4 into frame 1 simply cancelling this out you can see it will bring anything to frame 4 to frame 0 now let's do this if you add if you multiply all these transformation matrices what will you get you will get this matrix so this would be the result of multiplying all the transformation matrices it's the final transformation matrix that bring anything in frame of the end effector to the fixed global stationary frame at the base of the robot now this is everything we need to find the forward kinematics remember forward kinematics should give us the position of end effector which has three components as a function of joint angles q's which we had three of them nu one nu two nu three First, this matrix, when I say cosine of nu1, nu2, nu3, it's a shorthand notation to show cosine of nu1 plus nu2 plus nu3. And C means cosine, S means sine. Now, if you look at these transformation matrices, and remember that transformation matrices had this form, a rotation, a displacement, 0, 0, 0, 1. What would be the position of the end effector? These three elements will show us the position of end effector, and these nine elements are rotation matrices that show us the orientation of end effector. So if I want to write down the forward kinematics, I can do it using these three elements to position of end effector its x y z position would be equal to this is what we call the forward kinematics if i have the joint angles nu1 nu2 nu3 putting them into this equation i get the position of the robot and the factor x y z so this was the x y position how about if i want the orientation if i wanted let's say the orientation of the robot end effector i call it phi e which should have three elements rotation about x y z y z rotation right according to euler angles what would be these three i would have to look at the rotation part of the homogeneous transformation this part and by looking at it if we stick to the Euler guidelines, Z, Y, Z rotation, can you guess what is the Z, Y, Z angles? Well, this looks like an elementary rotation around Z only. So we can guess that the first 
z rotation was equal to nu1 plus nu2 plus nu3 then the y rotation is zero the next z rotation is zero so we have only one rotation around z axis equal to nu1 nu2 nu3 now i showed this for a simple robot how we can drive the forward kinematics using transformation matrices all you have to do is find transformations that bring each frame to the previous one multiply them look at the last three elements on the far right side to give to get the position of the end effector with this its z position was always zero because it's a planar robot and to look at the to get the angles we look at the rotation matrix part of it we could conclude that it has Euler angles z y z but the last y z rotations are zero so it's like we only have a rotation nu1 nu2 nu3 added up and this is what we call a forward kinematics this is for a three link planar robot our end effector has only position in x y and one rotation the way i drive the forward kinematics was kind of ad hoc and uh, a bit uh, complicated to follow another way to drive the forward kinematics is you do it by hand for instance if you look at this figure without the need to use rotation matrices we could estimate based on pure geometry where is the x position of end effector for instance it would be a3 times cosine of nu3 plus nu1 nu2 it's easy to do it using purely based on geometry you can find it x and y position but why don't we do that because as we go on we're gonna deal with more complicated robots robots in 3d with more arms doing it based on purely geometry is difficult and the way i assigned coordinates and used homogeneous transformation was kind of a really a naive way i didn't follow any strict protocols it was a bit hard to follow in the next session we're gonna talk about a uh, more strict guidelines to calculate the forward kinematics